What is time blocking and is it for you? That's the question we're going to discuss in today's video. Hey folks, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work and today we're going to do a crash course on time blocking 101. All right, so time blocking 101. First and foremost, what is time blocking? Well, time blocking is essentially the practice of setting aside specific time in your day to get something specific in your work done. One of the main reasons that people do time blocking like this is to combat Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law states that work expands to the time allotted to it. So if you give yourself eight hours to do a task, more than likely it's going to take you eight hours to get it done. But if you only give yourself an hour and a half or 30 minutes to get going on something, that is one way that you can combat Parkinson's law. You can give a limit to the amount of time that you're working on something to actually get it done and give yourself some motivation to get it done. Time blocking is just like setting an appointment on your schedule with yourself. We use our calendars more often than not to schedule interruptions or distractions, meetings and phone calls and outings to the dentist, things of that sort, but we don't really use our calendars to block off work that needs to get done. That is what time blocking is. It's using your calendar, using a, some time reference anyway, to set aside time to get specific work done. Now this idea was heavily proposed by Cal Newport as a way to build deep work. And that's actually one of the main reasons of why you would want to time block. If you're looking to build a deep work habit, or maybe you have some distractions that are keeping you from working more deeply, time blocking might be a solution for you to help build that deep work habit. Also time blocking really helps you take into account the time you actually have. When you have a calendar that's laid out to say, I have these hours in the day, these are the things that I'm work working on in those hours, you are very aware of the amount of time that you have in your day, and therefore you can plan accordingly. One of the biggest difficulties with building some sort of a productivity system for yourself is over planning. You put too many tasks on the same day. As a result of doing that, you stress yourself out because you have a boatload of tasks to do and not enough time to do them. And then those tasks roll over to the next day and to the next day and so on. And you have this almost snowball effect of tasks that happen. So time blocking is a way to combat that because you take into account the actual time you have. However, there may be some reasons that you wouldn't want to time block. So first and foremost, if you're working by the clock or if working by the clock stresses you out, I am one of those people. I do not like to time things. I don't like to put things on a time bound for myself because it causes me stress. It causes me to be less productive versus more productive. And so me personally, I've resisted time blocking, but I've recently done some experiments with it. And I think there's some valuable lessons to learn from time blocking, even if you don't fully like doing it. Also, another reason maybe to consider not doing time blocking is if your job requires mostly manager style work or it's a responsive job. When I worked as a manager, I spent most of my day responding to issues or requests that either my employees had or my customers had. That didn't leave a lot of time to get deep work done or set aside time in my calendar. I also was booked full of meetings because I was in a very synchronous corporate culture at that time. Now, I did set aside time in my calendar for deep work, doing time blocking like this, because I had to. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't have been able to get the work done that I needed to get done because somebody would have booked a meeting over top of that. So that's maybe a strategy that you can employ if you're in a manager style role and most of your work is responsive. You might not want to heavily calendar block your days, but you may want to set aside 90 minutes three times a week or something of that sort to get some actual project work done in your schedule. Now, there are some different kinds of time blocking. The way that I've broken it down is really into two different kinds. There's project and task time blocking, and then there's context and area time blocking. Project and task time blocking is just like it sounds. You're setting aside a block of time to work on a specific project or task. 
say you're working on a report that's due by Friday, you would put in your calendar to say, you know, whatever time you choose to work there, you would say, I'm working on this report during this time. You would title your calendar entry that or however mode that you choose, but you're, you're setting aside time to work on one specific thing. Another type of time blocking is context or area time blocking. This is when you set aside time to work on a chunk of tasks that are in the same type or mode of work. So for example, lately I have been setting aside time to work on producing these videos all in one chunk, producing podcasts all in one chunk, instead of trying to do it week by week or day by day. This helps me kind of get the ball rolling, get some momentum going in that specific area that I'm working on so that I can leverage batching, which is more of a principle from getting things done. So if you can group tasks or like items together, whether this be producing content, whether it be writing, whether it's writing reports, batching out your emails. These are different ways that you can handle context time blocking. So you put a block in your calendar to say, I'm gonna use these 30 minutes three times a day to handle my email. Now there are some specific ways that you can time block and I'm gonna cover just a few in this video. You can start off simple with writing your time blocks out. You can either do this digitally or on a piece of paper. I'll show you digital in just a minute here. And then you're just writing down approximate times that you want to start on things and then giving yourself a task to work on during that time frame. A broad way of time blocking, if you're not into doling out specific blocks of minutes during the day, is you can theme your days or half your days. So say you can take Mondays for meetings, Tuesdays for working on a specific type of project. Or if you have a lot more going on in your schedule and you don't have that luxury of being able to block out whole days, you could say, maybe I'm going to take Wednesday mornings for my project time. Also, you can do some more focused time blocks where you can create 90 minute blocks in your day and just do work like this and create a 90 minute block followed by a 30 minute break. That gives you enough margin in your day if you have interruptions, but it also gives you enough time to fully get into something and not totally burn yourself out. 90 minutes is a good sweet spot for a time block. And I picked this tip up from Graham Cochran over on the Graham Cochran YouTube channel. I'll put a link up here somewhere if you're interested in checking out his video on time blocking, it's really helpful. So we're going to dive into uh, showing you a couple of these ways and how you can time block and we'll go from there. So one of the most simple ways that you can block time is to write it down as we discussed. And an easy way to do that, I'm just using Obsidian here as an example. You can do this in any text file, you can do this on any sheet of paper, whatever works best for you, but you can literally just sit down and say, okay, it's 9 a.m., I'm going to work on producing videos. And then I'm gonna give myself, let's see, well, I'll start with a time frame. I'm go nine to 10, and then from 10 to 10.30, just some buffer so that I have some margin in my schedule, 10.30 to 12. I'm going to work on an import project, and so on and so forth. You can do this through the entirety of your day. You don't have to butt the times up against each other. You could do nine, to 10, you're gonna work on something in particular. Let's say, we'll do producing videos again. And then you can say, I'm starting at one to three, I'm going to write outlines. Something of that sort. You don't have to be super granular in this. The big thing is, is just writing out the big blocks of time that you're interested in getting your stuff on, done in. You can schedule in 30 minute blocks, you can schedule in 15 minute blocks, you can schedule in five minute blocks. If you're just starting out, I would definitely recommend starting to block time in broader time intervals and focusing on one or two things at a time in those time periods, likely just one. Uh, and then if you need more time, or you need to be more flexible in your days, you can block down in shorter increments. But 90 minutes seems to be the optimal amount of time to time block because it gives you enough time to get deep into a piece of work, but then it doesn't totally drain you. Uh, you have enough energy left to pull back out of it. And then once you, if you incorporate some kind of buffer time into your schedule, then that also helps you too. So just to give you an example of how you might want to time block in a calendar, 
what I've done here is I have some different time block calendars that I've created for different areas that I find are important. Family focus, leisure, things that are high value at effective remote work, high value at discourse, my job, uh, growth, those are personal development items, planning, planning and strategy, these would be things like my weekly review, and then admin and other. These are just kind of more broad base things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to lay out a day or two of what a time block might look like using 90 minute schedules. Uh, I do know that, for example, tomorrow morning, I'm out for family stuff. And then I like to try to block in my leisure time first. And so I want to make sure that from noon to one every day, I'm putting in a walk or a lunch. So all I'm doing is copy pasting that. This is an Apple Apple's calendar app on the Mac, but you can use whatever calendar app works for you. If you use Outlook at work, awesome. If you like to use Fantastical or something like that, which is whatever works for you. It's a basic calendar, Google Calendar. It doesn't really matter. Uh, now, so if I wanted to put in some high value stuff for effective remote work, say that I'm working on my videos for 90 minutes in the morning, I'll say videos. And then... I'm going to give myself a 30 minute break after working on these videos. And then I'm going to spend some time working on something discourse related. We'll just say I'm planning something for discourse. You can be more specific if you'd like to. And again, remember, you can do both projects and tasks or you can do context or areas. So say if I want to just work on a specific admin project in the afternoon after I get done with my walk, I can say admin. So that way I'm spending some time on my admin work that I need to get done in my schedule. So you can you can go hog wild like this throughout your week. And I found this is probably the easiest way to get started with time blocking. Uh, but again, if you have some kind of a maker schedule or a manager schedule rather, and you don't have maybe your calendar is booked up with meetings left and right throughout here, one thing that you can do is just maybe set a recurring item say I am going to block off my morning on Wednesdays for meeting or from meeting so that I can work on projects. This is my project focused time. You're not necessarily saying I'm spending A to B minutes, you know, 90 minutes working on this one thing, but you're setting aside a block of time in your day where nobody else can interrupt you with a meeting or a phone call and you're saying I'm I'm unavailable during this time. So you can use your calendar to do that too if you work in a calendar-based environment. Now, something else that you can do is you can block your days or you can theme your days. So one thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna change the name of this calendar here to themes. So Monday I'm gonna set is my theme for production. Tuesday, my theme is for meetings. Wednesday is my theme day for strategy. Friday, it, Thursday is kind of just an open day. Friday is my self-development day. And then like Saturday is usually my rest day, things like that. You can theme your days so then you can try to focus on those specific tasks during those days. So Monday would be my days focused on production style tasks. This would be end-to-end -end stuff for content production for effective remote work. Outlining videos, coming up with ideas, producing videos, things of that sort. Tuesday would be the day that I would meet with people. If you can block your stuff together on one single day, such as meetings, you prevent interruptions throughout the rest of the week. Wednesday, if you devote that to say strategy, this can be a day where you're taking a top level view. If you're a small business owner or if you're self-employed, this might be something to try to do at some point or at least theme a half a day. Say I can say maybe Wednesday mornings are for strategy. And I can spend from eight o'clock to noon thinking on big picture stuff for my business. This can be, what's what am I building next? How am I treating my customers? Is there anything in my product workflows or my productivity workflows that need to change? Building that type of strategy can be extra helpful uh, when it comes to running a small business. But again, if your days are a little bit busier and you have a little bit more going on in the week than just five days work worth of themes, you can also theme half of your days as well.
Okay, so now that we've covered these different ways of time blocking, there are some alternatives if you're not necessarily interested in blocking like this. One of my favorites is planning my priorities. If I sit down and write down the top one, two, or three items that I need to get done in a day, that usually keeps me on track for the majority of the day, if I keep those things top of mind. Another alternative to time blocking is to track your time. You're not setting aside time necessarily in advance, but you could use a service like Top and if you're on iOS, you could use an app like Timery to interact with the Toggle API to track your time throughout your day. So you can set up projects or areas that you wanna track your time in, press a little button and say, all right, I'm working on this thing now. And then you can, when you move on to the next thing, you press another button and it starts tracking in that area. This is one way, if you're not interested in blocking time, that you can continue to monitor how your time is used so that then you can make decisions about that at a later point in time. However, you're still going to deal with if you're stressed out by tracking time, which again, I am one of those people, this may not be beneficial for you because I think you'll still deal with stress. That's definitely the case for me when I have to very closely track time or when I've tried to track time in the past, including time blocking, it stressed me out. The other alternative that you could do that I find a lot less stressful but is similar to tracking time is doing some kind of micro journaling. So this is the idea that when you switch tasks or switch projects that you're working on, say I'm working on a development project starting at nine o'clock, I can write down when I'm done, when I switch away from that task in my notebook, what time it is and what I did for that last bit of time that I was working. And then if you start to do this every single time you switch, you do retain an awareness of how you're spending your time, but there's not this clock ticking in the background saying, hey, I've gotta be aware of how much time I'm spending. So if you're stressed out again by tracking time in any sort, that might be a way to try to keep yourself on track. Because too, when you write down what you've been working on or when you're conscious of what you're working on, that's probably the most important thing to help yourself keep focused. So what about you? Do you time block or do you do something else? I would love to hear from you in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching this video and I'll talk to you in the next one.